Hey, welcome to another episode of News You Can Use. Happy Friday, by the way, because we got a lot to talk about, including the fact that Ryerson University, well, people are calling on them to change its name permanently. Why? We'll tell you. Also, Canada has set an official holiday for truth and reconciliation in this country. And there's this Caribbean country that's now saying this, if you're fully vaccinated, you can come here and you don't need to quarantine. Which country? We'll tell you very soon. Plus, some good news about plane ticket prices in Canada. So before we even get to that, homework time, which means subscribing to this channel right now, hit that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media. Okay, back to the big story that everybody's talking about, and that's the fact that Ryerson University in Toronto is now being referred to, a, get this, as X University by many people, including professors and students, because of who the university is named after and the fact that that man is associated with the creation of Canada's racist residential school system. So let me share a bit more about this because students and Indigenous faculty at Ryerson, or maybe we should call it X University as we're presenting this news to you, have now started a petition. And basically, the man who this university is named after is called Egerton. And what people want to see is his statue removed from the university's campus. This all comes after the heartbreaking discovery of the remains of 215 Indigenous children at the Kamloops Residential School in BC. Now, Eva, you attend Ryerson. This is a bit messy. Mm -hmm. You attend Ryerson. How do you feel about this and what are some of the other students there feeling? Um, so ever since I can remember, you know, on campus, the mm -hmm. statue has been vandalized and there's graffiti on it as it should because it's a constant reminder of what he's done. But you have to also realize that this is very engraved into the school. Like our mascot's name is Eggie after Egerton Ryerson. So mm. it's in everything and I understand, especially Indigenous people who are, it's a constant reminder of what they had to go through. Imagine walking to class and seeing the statue every single day. Yeah. So I understand where they're coming from and it's very unfortunate. But I don't know what the next steps are. You know, they're wanting it to completely be changed, not Ryerson University, X University now, and just change Egerton completely, wipe him off, which I get. Yeah, because he is one of the creators of this residential school system that of course has had ripple effects upon generation and generation for Indigenous peoples. But is it the right move? I mean, are we even the ones to decide that? Should it be Indigenous people who decide that? you got to let us know right now in the comment section, because I know a lot of you have a lot of thoughts on this, so drop it right now. In the meantime, um, as this country addresses truth and reconciliation, Canada is finally starting to take some action. Did you know? September 30th has now been officially set as a national holiday in this country for truth and reconciliation. And this is big news, Eva. So how did this come about? So Bill C-5 is what they're calling it, is, has been going up forward. But mm -hmm. after they d discovered the 215 Indigenous children at the former residential school in BC, they fast-tracked it in Parliament and now have made it a national holiday, which is big and was necessary. So September 30th. You yeah. know what, uh, what I find interesting is, okay, so what are people going to do on this holiday? Like, it's great that you named the day, but then what does that mean for everybody else? What are we doing for that community? Mm -hmm. is, are you guys setting up, like, more fundraising initiatives like what are you doing to mm. actually progress anything because that's just like the same thing of like writing something on a wall or yeah. like it's it's there's no action yeah yeah no that's right. a good point kelly hey guys what are you guys thinking right now let us know drop your thoughts in the comment section as well okay can we talk about traveling it's yes. on <laughs> let's Let's. I, like, can I have some time off? <laughs> no. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, soon we will. Okay, but literally, there are so many people who are eager to travel again, especially going to the Caribbean, where direct flights from Canada have been cancelled for months on end. But listen to this. There's actually a Caribbean country, St. Lucia, which is now accepting fully vaccinated travelers, and you can do basically anything. So let's get some more information because we actually have the Prime Minister of St. Lucia waiting in the wings. Prime Minister Alan Chastanet from St. Lucia, thank you so much for joining us here on News You Can Use. Great to be here. I, I hope you, you're having as good weather as we were having down here. It's getting better for us here in Canada, but let's talk about it because Canadians love to travel. We haven't been able to with COVID, but your country has implemented something pretty significant for fully vaccinated people. Talk to me about that. Um, about two weeks ago, we've now launched where 
persons who are vaccinated and come down with a negative PCR test actually don't need to be quarantined. So it means that you can start enjoying um, what you used to have pre-COVID um, here in St. Lucia. So we're looking forward to getting many Canadians down. Do you expect other Caribbean countries to follow suit? We do. I mean, and I, I think, but the, the big fight that really goes on on these things is that there are some countries actually who are allowing vaccinated people in without the PCR test. And mm. so to your point, you know, is that a bridge too far? I mean, and that's for a decision for each country to make. And I respect any decision any country makes in that regard. We just feel that given the number of people that we have currently vaccinated um, and also that we have limited hospital space, we have a dedicated respiratory center that has about 110, 110 beds. We only have four people currently in that hospital, but we're, we're cognizant all the time of our own limitations. Are you nervous about people coming down, still not, being, not having to quarantine, even though these COVID vaccines are not 100% effective? So Brent, we, we, from the day one of this whole situation, um, we came up with a term that we coined coexisting with COVID. Mm. Um, and so it's with the understanding, and I think Canada went through this thing, you can't eliminate this thing entirely, but you can't just stop living. Um, and what the goal here is to do is to reduce the risk. So even when we had our bubble and we were bringing people in with negative PCR tests, um, what we did is made sure that our staff that went on property um, were vaccinated, well, were tested before they went on the property. Um, they left their uniforms on property. They had their own private um, transportation back home so they didn't have to rely on the public transportation. They showered on property. Um, and people continue to practice the protocols, the face masks, the social distancing, and the hand sanitizing. In terms of vaccination rates, what percentage of St. Lucians are vaccinated right now? Um, about 18% um, and about 15% on the, sec the second shot. Um, the problem that we're having, uh, Brand, is, is what most developing countries are having is getting access to the vaccines. Mm -hmm. So we've only been able to get vaccines from COVAX, which is this entity that was established um, to share equitably the vaccine. So the U.S. and Canada now have made a contribution recently, and we're constantly trying to find more vaccines. And it's, it's, it's like finding the needle in the haystack, I have to tell you. You know, Prime Minister, I want to get back to the reopening plan because I want to be transparent with our viewers. Back in 2019, I visited St. Lucia and attended the Roots and Soul Festival. So I have to ask you, is that going to be back on? So I would say to you by September, we're hoping that we would have reached some kind of herd immunity, which would allow us now to relaunch. So we have put money in our budget this year to relaunch our Jeanne Creole and also to combine it with our carnival. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chastanay, thank you so much for joining us on News You Can Use. Brand, thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in St. Lucia very soon. So listen, I'm ready to go back to St. Lucia. I think we as a team should all just go to St. Lucia. Ooh, We're not getting time talk off. to me nice. <laughs> is, that, is that funded by Gonez Media Inc.? <laughs> it Make sure to like and subscribe, guys, and support the channel, please. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But you know what I'm also really glad that he brought up is the fact that there are so many countries, yeah. smaller countries in the world, that are desperate for vaccines, mm -hmm. and they can't get any because they're being hogged by some of the bigger countries like Canada. Yet people here, and I'm, yeah. there's no judgment, but people here are, don't want to get vaccinated. Yeah, like we're begging people, like, go, we have vaccines waiting for you. And over there, he said 18%, right? Yeah. Like, they're, any vaccine they're trying to give to everyone. So we're really privileged here. And I don't, you know, I didn't even think about that. When that came up, I was like, whoa. When we are allowed to travel, where do you want to go? Can you let us know? And by the way, as we talk about traveling, I have some good news for you guys. So plane ticket prices across this country are dropping mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, complaining. Very happy All about the way it. low. We actually did a TikTok about it. We did. Make sure to check out our TikTok. Shall we show them? Ugh, we said. Run a clip. Hey guys, did you know that you could fly across Canada for dirt cheap right now? For example, a round trip flight from Toronto to Vancouver is now going for less than $300. Apparently the airlines are trying to drive up demand. So where are you going?
So again, I mean, this comes as airlines are trying to drive up demand. But I mean, to travel from Toronto to Vancouver round trip for less than three hundred dollars, I don't think I've ever seen that. Mm -mm. I used to live in BC. Yeah, no, that's Vancouver's a, a an expensive flight mm -hmm. to say the least. So again, I will be asking, can I please have some time off? Why don't we do a team trip? Like, I team like this. trip. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go ask the people of Vancouver sure. what they think of Brandon Gonez. If you want to see yeah. us when you're in Vancouver, let us know. <laughs> What do you guys think about Kelly? Why don't we ask that? Why don't we ask that? Anyways, that's your news you can use for today. Remember, if you have any stories, hit us up on social media or email us, news at brandongonashow.com. Eva's always looking for your pitches, so don't mm -hmm. be shy. And remember, we drop new episodes of News You Can Use every Tuesday and Friday. And this Sunday on the BG Show, whoo, 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 let me tell you. We get into it. We get, we get into, into, it. into it. Open relationships. Are you about that life? Mm. Mm. Don't spit out your tea because <laughs> the tea is hot. Anyways, we'll see you same place, same time. Bye. <laughs>